Uh, nobody was in control, and um, we didn't really know what was going on. I think the biggest mischaracterization was the crime was not the festival itself. Even if Fire One was as advertised and perfect, I still would have gone to jail. My crime was misleading investors to try to raise the money that I thought I needed for the festival. For ticket holders, for vendors, for people who actually wanted to come to Fire One, we legitimately tried super hard to make it work, but it was decisions I made behind the scenes that were immoral and wrong. So this time around, it's a different story, working with real people, giving ourselves plenty of time, uh, a year as opposed to a handful of months the first time around, and also passing the buck off and letting others be in charge of the areas where I shouldn't be in charge. One of the biggest lessons is just the importance of people and trust. Um, trying to make fire one happen, I started taking shortcuts, whether that was lying to investors or just trying to move too quickly. And I feel like the mentality that I was embodying were attracting other people who were also looking to take shortcuts. And I didn't develop really deep relationships. I had hundreds or thousands of surface level relationships that weren't really real. And I think in jail, when that was all stripped away, I realized the importance of fewer, deeper relationships and like trust and time. So it's like finding the right people, but it starts with like your own actions and just making sure I'm doing things properly and, and honestly. We are just under a year away from Fire Festival 2. And the big difference this time is that there are operational partners who are in charge. So I'm in my marketing box. I can kind of create the wild fire moments, but if you see me installing bathrooms, something, something's wrong this time. <laughs> They're letting me do the marketing, letting me bring people together and create really fun experiences. But we have partners who are actually in charge of all the operations. And there are various like talent partners, catering partners, transportation partners. And then there is me and my fire team, which is in charge of the marketing and the stunts, whether it's jumping from a helicopter or lobster diving, you know, we are there to make fire fire. My job is to be this little airplane flying through a storm and trying to tell you that we're not sure if we're going to crash or land. And I feel like the more we can embrace that hurricane, the more people are gonna to wanna to get a front row seat and be there as it happens and just be part of this three-day weekend cultural moment where the outcome is just not clear. Fire has just been the most talked about music festival in the world. Uh, obviously, a lot of that has been negative, but I think that's made the five or 10% of the people who are talking about it, who are the supporters, that much more staunch advocates to go against the grain, to be there for these three days, to get away from reality and just like come together through a wild experience. So we're trying to embrace it. And the more storms, the better. So if that means the Bermuda Triangle, I'll give the partners a call and see if they let me do it. A few months ago, we rented an airstrip outside of New York City. We threw a concert literally on the runway and then took people up in small airplanes to experience zero gravity. Uh, then in Miami, a few weeks ago, we did helicopter jumps with the Red Bull dive team to basically see how we can go in the helicopter, jump out, and then did a small underwater concert. So fire is not just the music, it's like the fashion, it's the technology, it's the adventure, it's the extreme sports. Then obviously music is the backdrop while you're coming together through all these activities. So we did two pre-sales. We put the first 100 tickets on sale last August and they sold out in a day. Then we did the second pre-sale a few weeks ago and we took applications for tickets and we received over $110 million of applications for people who wanted to come to Fire 2. And that included a number of people who were bidding on or applying to buy a million dollar fire ticket. Uh, prices for the actual festival will start at 3,500 and then go up to the million dollar ticket package. I think doing glamping right provides a really good experience. We obviously did it really wrong last time. And I just like remember two weeks before the festival, we had no mattresses and I went on Amazon and just bought a million dollars of mattresses on a credit card, like <laughs> thinking that would solve the problems. So kind of shows the need for having a really good operation partner, but it'll be a mix of people living on boats, people and like actually high end glamping and then real bills in the island as well. It was really hard to find the right partners to trust me. And it took a year of getting out of jail where no one would answer my phone calls. They would think everything is ridiculous, but now I have a really, really solid team. There is someone who's actually in charge of the festival. And then underneath them, they brought in a handful of like industry experts to make Fire 2 go really well. But yeah, it just took so much longer than I thought to get that quality team around the table to make this happen. Having real partners gives an opportunity in the next five to seven years to actually pay back that $26 million. And unfortunately, no one's offered me $26 million to work somewhere else. So taking advantage that since 2016, like we literally are the most talked about music festival in the world. Uh, we've had three times as many mentions as Coachella, which is in second place, and there's a huge drop off after that. So it's an incredible opportunity to steer that ship into the storm, embrace everything that's happened. And if Fire 2 goes well, the brand recognition of, of Fire as a media company as a travel company, as an entertainment brand is massive and can make right a lot of the wrongs that I did before. I just like love creating communities 
And I used to do that through technology, and that technology led me to this island that I fell in love with in the Bahamas. And it was these trips with a community based on my tech product where I had the idea to do a music festival. So I'm more interested in how I can connect and bring people together. I think in the future, like how can I share fire with a million people around the world and not just a few thousand? That's more interesting to me than trying to do more events. Being forced to be away from family or friends and almost watching them get punished for your mistakes that they weren't involved in is, I think is the hardest aspect of it. And I think I was lucky to have only have done four years and been able to come back and still have opportunities and people who are willing to work with me. And I have a lot of friends who I met in prison who went to jail because they didn't have chances in life. And it's hard if they're there for 10, 15, 20 years to come out and suddenly find chances. So I just feel really lucky they still had people who were willing to give me a shot when I walked out of the door. Uh, I had a close friend who was set to be released after 15 years uh, in two weeks. And I got a call last week that he died. Uh, literally, I guess, three weeks before he was supposed to be released. That was that was like the biggest shock in the world. And just kind of like reminded you how real that, that whole process was. So. Yeah, I've been on the phone with his wife, like, who I've never met in person every day since, and that, that's kind of wild. Um, on the positive side, there are three or four people who I met there who I believe will be lifelong friends. And I think we were all kind of taught that there are good people and bad people in the world, and I certainly believe that. And I went to jail, I'm like, it's probably not true. Like, there's a small percentage that I guess are like psychopaths, but the rest of everybody else is somewhere on the spectrum where they're desperate and they make a bad decision. And that was like a really crazy, life experience for me that most things aren't black and white and good people can sometimes make bad decisions out of desperation. I was with uh, Michael Cohen in the situation in, in New York for, for six months, but I, I got in trouble there relatively quickly. So they, oh, they, they shipped me out. I was working on a book and I had a USB device. I think when you do something wrong and you're living the ramifications for that, you can like comprehend why it's happening. But when you didn't do something wrong and you're still being punished, you just kind of get this mentality where like this isn't fair. So. Yeah, I think not just for me, but all the other inmates that I was around, the families are often the ones who suffer the most in, in, in a weird way, and it's, just, it's not right. So whenever I see somebody getting in trouble now, like the first thing I think about, like, oh, they're poor family. I think I, I joked a few months ago that my personal burn rate is as low as it's been since I was like 15 years old. So definitely don't live the way I used to, and there's, there's a huge hill to climb. Uh, that said, fire is about having fun. So still go out and, and, and do fun things, whether it's helicopter jumps or underwater concerts or you know, concerts on runways. I, I find ways to make it all work, but doing it in a way that's more sustainable that will allow me to pay everybody back, which is like the most important thing. When I was in prison, I got a debit card form to pay like $7 million in jail. And I was always joking, like, where's my supposed to pull my debit card out of here <laughs> to pay a $7 million bill? But yeah, there's, you know, there's restitution, there's taxes, there's everything from like the pre-fire days that, that we were working on. Uh, restitution's around 26 million and I pay that every month. So whatever I earn, I go and literally give a physical check or pay online every single month. And then, yeah, there are various other people who are involved in Fire One that I'm paying back on a monthly basis as well.